this video we are going to talk about the science of brute force in general and more specifically in SAT solving. There will be some examples to illustrate the mechanism and effectiveness of this technology. Where some of the problems solved by SAT might never have been solved by mathematicians due to the large size and the complexity of the arguments of the answer. For instance, the author in this article studies the Pythagorean triple problem using SAT solving which resulted in a 200 terabyte solution that cannot be understood by human yet. The interest in solving SAT formula have been increasing over the last decades, starting from 1990s with Davis and Putnam, where they were able to handle thousands of clauses, followed by recent solvers handling millions of clauses, resulting in the SAT revolution. SAT consists of three steps. First, encode problems into SAT formulas. Second, solve formula and then you can decode the solution to obtain the answer for the original problem. SAT problems have for a long time been considered as MB completeness. SAT solving has become essential for many applications, including hardware and software validation. In security and safety, for example, SAT solving return whether the system is secure and safe or not. Even though the solution is not yet understandable due to its size, SAT solving uses a Boolean variable V that receives either true or false, and which is constrained to clauses. These clauses are disjunctions of literals. Disjunctions are expressions of statements using the logical AND and OR. For example, a literal variable X receives V or the negation of V. Thus, X can be true or false, and this negation can also be true or false depending on the first assignment. The SAT formula is a disjunction of clauses, but using the logical AND, a clause is satisfied when at least one of the literals is true. A SAT formula solution is when all clauses of the formula are satisfied. Formula with solutions are called satisfiable or SAT and unsatisfiable otherwise. For instance, assume the logical expression OR and AND displayed. This formula is satisfiable when X is equal to Y is equal to true or X is equal to Y is equal to false because X or negation of Y would be equivalent to true or false, thus satisfy the constraint of having at least one true literal. Mechanism of SAT solving that solving performs three paradigms, local search, conflict-driven clause learning, CBCL, and look ahead until obtaining a unit clause. Unit clauses are clauses with a literal that's not falsified, while the other literals are not assigned. Thus, the literal is assigned to true, and using that literal, we solve the other literal and clauses. Local search finds the solution by doing local changes to total assignment for all variables or literals. Look ahead recursively splits the problem as cleverly as possible into sub-problems. CDCL assigns variables to find a satisfying assignment. In case it does not find anything, it adds a clause to the formula. CDCL algorithm cycles through three phases while assigning to literals. Simplify. During Simplify, the assignment is extended by detecting new inferences. Then, Decide. Heuristically picks an unassigned variable and assigns it to true or false. The algorithm iterates through the first and second phases many times. In the end, either satisfy or add a clause to the formula. In case it adds to the formula, Learn starts. Learn phase learns the conflicts or unsatisfiability as a clause and modifies the assignment to resolve the conflict. If the empty clause is learned, the solver detects unsatisfiability. Otherwise, simplify and decide is performed repeatedly. One technique for set solving is unit clause propagation, also known as UCP. As mentioned previously, unit clauses are key to solving set problems given there is only one unit clause. The UCP will satisfy the remaining literals in the unit clauses. An assignment is a literal with true or false. A formula is a set of clause or constraint to the assignment. 
Given an assignment and a formula, UCP has now two terminating states. All unit clauses satisfied and if there is a conflict with two contemporary clauses where x and negative x are both true, also known as conflict. Conflicts are analyzed to obtain new clauses that are added to the formula which are also known as conflict clauses. But one might ask, are SAT solver results trusted? In order to check the correctness of a SAT solver solution, we can do the following. If a solution exists, then check if a solution satisfies at least one literal and every clause. But if a solution doesn't exist, then there are two approaches that can be used to verify the result. First, we can approve its correctness, which can result in a verified SAT solver, but it has two disadvantages. The first disadvantage is that only some state of the art techniques are verified. The second is that the verification only done on a higher level implementation, which excludes the low level implementation. And both disadvantages slow down the verified solver sustainability. So the proof format has five properties, which are 1. Easy production to ensure that it will be supported by many solvers. 2. Compact to have small overhead. 3. Simple to avoid trust issue. 4. Efficient to make verification useful in practice. And 5. Expressible. Although the given 5 properties, it is hard to achieve the easy, compact, and expressible properties. Closely proof work as follow. First step, we can start with a given formula composed of a list of clauses. Then we can add or delete the clauses and we choose the addition because it is a solution preserving. Then we will keep adding and deleting clauses until we finally add up the empty clause, which will mark the unsatisfiability. This closal proof of unsatisfiability is also known to be a cheap process to perform. Brute force attack was only used to its minimal and was only used for smaller problem until sad crew. It takes the brute force into a stronger approach and to its best of its abilities. Some of its common strategies are bounded model checking and equivalent checking. The SAT solver has been able to test the input such that the output would differ. But some interesting problems would require a rigid logic but does not mean that SAT could solve this. The basic idea is that there is a problem which is solved but the solution is not of the given problem. Then the SAT would add a clause that would enable the SAT to finding similar solutions. Incremental SAT solving is one big example of this. This has been widely successful in ATP, also known as automated theorem proving. There are multiple ATP solvers such as Vampire, iProver, and Leo. MT, also known as the satisfiability modulo theory, is another successful extension of the SAT, which uses multiple theories. Basically, brute force is not concerned about the understanding of the problem and hence to understand a problem which has just been solved, a human interference is required. The example given is assuming here that alien is a provable and a sort mathematical statement with a very long proof. It can further be constructed by using the Gödel's method, which basically says that all proof will require a mathematical and logical number. There are many cases where a paper proof exists, a human truth is preferred. There are also some cases where the proof has been proven manually but also with some computer help, also known as weakly human. Also a proof may be done manually but needs to be checked by a theorem prover. To conclude, it is definitely possible to gain insight by using SAT. However, that insight might need to be reinterpreted and might work on a higher level of abstraction. Every paradigm change means asking different questions. Gödel incompleteness theorem solved partially the question of the consistency of mathematics by showing that the answer provable cannot be delivered in the naive way. Now the task is to live up to big complexities and to embrace the new possibilities. Proofs must become object for investigation and understanding will be raised to the next level. How to find and handle the complexity.